In this video, we're gonna cover how to build a complete home gym for $2,000, including our five essentials, a rack, barbell, dumbbells, plates, bench, and a few extras to round it all out. Now, because everyone's got their own wants and needs, for each category, I'll give three choices my top pick, an alternative, and a budget pick. Now, I spent a ton of time researching all this from every possible angle, and we've got quite a few videos on the topic, but let's start this off with the biggest piece of advice I can give anyone building a budget home gym. Buy everything you can used. Sure, I've linked all the things we're gonna talk about in the description if you prefer when things are shiny and new, or if you find this content useful and want to support the channel, feel free to go crazy with those affiliates, but you can save yourself a lot of money on the used marketplace. Yeah, you might not get exactly what you want, and you may get stabbed, but if you survive, you'll have a heck of a home gym. So let's get started. This budget range gives us some interesting options when it comes to dumbbells, and my top pick has a few advantages over others, and that's Rep's Quick Draw Adjustable Dumbbells. The last thing I wanna worry about is my equipment. I don't wanna baby it, because what happens if my dumbbell accidentally rolls off a bench or I tweak something and have to drop them? Then I'm out $800 because my newabells rolled off a six inch ledge? I'm not saying you should spike your stuff after every set, but it's gym equipment, not my cell phone. Reps quick draws go up to 60 pounds, which isn't ideal for everyone, but with a mostly steel construction, they're durable, can be changed in five and a half or even two and a half pound increments, if you don't mind a little imbalance, and it's quick and simple to change the weights. They've got nicely knurled handles, and if you buy a smaller set, you can expand them later, and they're a pretty good value when you look at many alternatives costing about $800, even if they do go a little heavier. Are they perfect? No, but we'll leave the in-depth critiques for our upcoming review, so subscribe so you don't miss that one. As an alternative, I'd go with PowerBlocks Elite EXPs. My first warning with these is there's 436 variations of them, and while they all have their place and differences, like the Elite USA 90s, which aren't to be confused with the Elite USA 90s, I chose the Elite EXPs, which are another variation that isn't listed on PowerBlocks website for one simple reason, the price. These are an imported version of PowerBlocks, hence the cheaper price tag, but they're functionally identical to the others. I don't love the cage feeling of power blocks or the plate change system, but they're very durable. They're adjustable in two and a half pound increments. This set can expand out to 90 pounds and the 50 pound pair can regularly be found new for 300 to $350, making them a very high value set of adjustables. If you're looking for a budget option, I'd go with loadable dumbbells. My pick here is Bells of Steel, and that's whether that's the industrial ones or not. They're essentially the same outside of the finish, and I find them to have the best quality to price ratio versus other budget options from Titan and Fringe Sport. You pay a little more for Bells over Titan, but they punch way above their price tag. The knurling is great, the finishes are better than you'd expect, and outside of them weighing 13 pounds instead of a more logical increment, for the money, I have no complaints, and complaining is my specialty. Now, loadable dumbbells aren't for everyone. They're not nearly as quick or convenient. They can dig into your legs and like to roll away, and you'll need enough plates to make them work, but there's no cheaper option out there. Your next choice is probably your biggest, both in cost and physically, and that's a power rack. For many of us, the rack is the centerpiece of our gym, as it's not only what a lot of our workouts revolve around, but if you choose a good one, it'll grow with you as you add more attachments or build off of it, like we've done with our rep rack. First up is our top pick, Titan's X3 Power Rack, because while it's pushing our budget, it's a high value rack. And remember, if you use my first piece of advice, buy used, if you pay with cash, there's no way for your family to track it, so none of your purchases count. In reality, the X3 is a well-done rack, and Titan has a good ecosystem to go with it. 
the lat pull down and low row. They make the best budget roller J cups on the market and the Squat Max MD is very good. But the most important accessory they have is the preacher curl attachment. Seriously though, they've got a lot of options and it'll bring you into the three by three 11 gauge power rack world, which is great because you can build off and add on to it in any direction, allowing you to really maximize your space. I always use my 11 post rep road rack as an example of that. The 5 8 holes of the X3 means the attachments will be less expensive though. The downside of that is more companies support and innovate on one inch racks. So you won't have the full gamut available to you. You will though get west side hole spacing, six finish options. You've got a few depth choices and 80 and 90 inch heights. And dollar for dollar, it's a very well done rack, but that doesn't mean it's the best option out there. As an example of that, Bells of Steel's Hydra Rack is directly compatible with Rogue's Monster Light Rack, and I'd pick it over the X3, not only because of the compatibility between them, but also because Bells has height markings along the uprights, unlike Rogue or Titan. And I actually think Rep's PR4000 is the best 3x3 5 8 inch rack out there. It's got a better fit and finish than the X3, and with equal four-way hole spacing and attachments like the Ares and Athena, the ecosystem and ways you can build off it's better. But if the X3 is pushing our budget, those ones are really crushing it. And the X3 is a very good rack. After my top pick, things get interesting because there's about 4,683 options, which is a good thing because we've got a ton more choices than we had even a few years ago, but it can make narrowing things down daunting. So here's a few rules I live by. One, anything that's 16 gauge is too thin. Ask me how I know. And if they don't list the gauge, they're hiding it. So stay away. Though, even if they do, they may be lying. Again, ask me how I know. Two, budget racks that try to do 5,000 things and cost less than an X3 have to cut costs somewhere and often end up not doing a whole lot well which brings us to our alternative and budget picks, and I choose whichever one appeals to you since their prices and ecosystems are similar. You've got Reps PR1100 with four finish options, and they've got a decent amount of accessories available for it, or Titan's T2, which also has a good amount of attachments available. But the best thing about these racks is they're highly compatible with each other since they're both two inch by two inch 14 gauge power racks with one inch holes, though their overall dimensions are identical and the hole spacing is a little different with Rep using three inch hole spacing and Titan using two, but it means you can use attachments from one on the other. So if you wanted to put spotter arms onto your PR1100, since Rep doesn't make any for their two by two racks, you could use Titans. Now, because of that difference in hole spacing, this second hole's not gonna line up but they're still gonna work fine. And you can also use attachments from companies like Fringe Sport or whoever else you can find as one inch holes are the most popular size for two by two racks. Sure, they aren't gonna come close to the options a three by three rack will have, but you're not dropping a mortgage payment on one and they're a great starter rack that could potentially last you a lifetime. Next up is the most exciting purchase of any home gym the bench and as a connoisseur of them i own about 25 more than anyone needs which is one now i've learned a lot from my equipment collecting but it's hard to argue against rep fitness's stranglehold on the home bench scene so they're gonna dominate this section and my top pick is literally my wife's top pick the AB4100. If you're looking for a high quality adjustable bench with a lot of finish options, one that's stable, lightweight, and has an exceptional pad, this is probably the one for you. I think the vast majority of people will be very happy with this bench. Are there nicer options out there? Sure, but if you don't need overbuilt and high end, this is what I'd tell you to get. And that has nothing to do with my wife threatening to hurt me if I don't tell people how great it is. I am 
perfectly safe here. If you're looking for something a little less expensive and with a little more versatility to it, the AB3000 2.0 is my alternative pick. This is a FID bench, meaning it can also decline, but that's a little bit generous because it only goes down 12 degrees, but with a 1,000 pound weight capacity, it's a little beefier than the 4100. It's not as easy to move around and it doesn't store vertically because unlike the 4100, it doesn't have a cage around the ladder, but you can kind of finagle that vertical storage. They both feature the same great pad, have seven back positions, though the 3000 does have a few more seat positions, and they've got laser cut angle markings and are overall really good refined benches. My budget pick though is the AB3000. This is the cheapest I'd go on an adjustable bench. I've actually reviewed a ton of other lower price ones, but I've never really felt safe on any of them. I think reps cut costs in places in this bench where it makes sense without it feeling cheap. So you'll have one less back position than the others, no vertical storage. There aren't any laser cut angle markings or any of the more refined touches a more expensive bench would have, but it's a compact and stable bench with a tripod design so the bench's feet won't get in your way. It's got well done finishes and a good pad, though the seat pad is maybe a little narrow, but you'll feel like you're really getting a lot for your money with a 3100. Next up is Olympic plates, and this is where things get challenging because I've owned and tested an absurd amount of bumper plates and even gone so far as to cut over a dozen of them in half. But if you hadn't noticed, I have a slight addiction or maybe it's a sickness when it comes to gym equipment, and I've got a ton of metal plates as well. And unfortunately, I only get three picks. So I'm gonna give you four and a half. My top pick for bumper plates is Giant Lifting's contrast bumpers because you're getting a really great high quality plate at a good price. Now, they're not quite at the level of many of fringe sports offerings, but it's hard to argue with the value you're getting with these. They're accurate, have a low bounce and a great warranty and good quality control. For a budget bumper, I'd go with Homegrown Lifting's Euromax bumpers. These are crumb rubber plates, meaning they're made from recycled rubber, but they're made in the US, can be used outdoors, and are one of the cheapest options out there. And we actually liked them so much, they ended up being our top crumb rubber pick in our bumper plate buyer's guide, which was no small feat. They do suffer from the same issues all crumb rubber bumpers do. They have a higher bounce, they're gonna be wider than other types of bumpers, and aren't as durable as other rubber mixes. And the smaller plates like the 10s and 15s, they bend very easily, but in a home gym setting, they should last an incredibly long time and their matching change plates are really cool. For iron plates, both my picks are pretty similar in price and that's Titan's cast iron Olympic plates or either version of Bells of Steel's Mighty Grip plates, the gray or black powder coat because they're identical outside of the color. These budget plates are a step up from your ultra budget options like cap grip plates and the generic barbell standard plates everyone sells. You'll get better weight tolerances and more consistent quality control because Cap and others source their plates from several different places. So you'll sometimes find big differences in finishes, the plate's diameter, and just the quality overall can vary quite a bit. Now that doesn't mean Bells of Steel or Titan are equal to Rogue or the Strength Co's American-made premium plates, but they're a more economical option that perform well. So pick the style that appeals to you. Titans if you want a more classic looking plate, and Bells if you want grip plates that are easier to handle. As for how many to get, get a pair of two and a halfs, fives, 25s, two pairs of 10s, and as many 45s as you can afford or need. This is also where you can save the most money on the used marketplace. When it comes to a barbell, depending on how you've spent so far, you've actually got a ton of options, as our cheapest build is about 
$1,300 to this point, maybe less if you didn't go crazy on plates, and our top build is nowhere near the budget, but you spend your money however you want as long as you click my links. For barbells, I'm going to give two picks for power bars and two for multi-purpose bars so we can cover all the styles of training. If you're looking for a do-everything barbell, I actually like Reps Colorado Bar as the build quality, finishes, and knurling is very well done, and I actually like it over my Rogue Ohio Bar. But if you're looking for a cheaper option, Reps Delta Basic Bar is probably the only bar under $200 I recommend anymore. It's not going to compete with more expensive options, but as a starter or beater bar, it's surprisingly good. If you're into powerlifting and strong like me, or at least pretending to be strong, and want a power bar, then my top pick is, and has been for years, Rogue's Ohio Power Bar. I think dollar for dollar, this is the best option out there. As an American-made bar, you really can't ask for much more. Great knurling, build quality and pricing, and more finish options than anyone else. I think they really shine with a stainless steel shaft, but that's pushing our luck with the budget, though you could get lucky in the boneyard. But if you're wondering about finishes and want to roll your eyes as I make way too many shaft jokes, I'd watch our Barbell Buyer's Guide as it goes into detail on all aspects of bars while we break down our collection of about 40 of them. My budget pick is Bells of Steel's Bare Naked Powerlifting Bar. It's a bare shaft, so you'll have to maintain it or it'll rust. And I've seen ones with some inconsistent knurling, but we reviewed this years ago, and I still think it's the best value power bar out there. If you took my advice and bought some stuff used, you hopefully saved some money or, more realistically, just bought three times more equipment than you had planned. Congratulations, you're one of us now. But we're not quite done yet. We've got a few quick things to complete your never-ending home gym build. For barbell collars, the Clout Fitness ones on Amazon are decent for under $20, but I actually like Bells of Steel magnetic collars a little better as they hold plates better, are thinner, and the magnets are great for storage. I've tried some of the ones that look identical on Amazon, but haven't had as much luck as with the Bells ones. For flooring, you're gonna go to Tractor Supply or whatever you've got locally and get three quarter inch thick, four foot by six foot horse stall mats and tape them together with Gorilla Tape to help hold them in place and help keep out the dust and grime. And if you have anything left, and you won't, but it wouldn't be a Glux Gym build video if I didn't tell you to go buy gymnastic rings, the cheapest and most versatile piece of gym equipment there is. Reps one and a quarter inch wooden rings are phenomenal for the price. If this video is helpful, please subscribe to boost my ego hit that like button, give me some kind of comment, and of course, spend all of your money with my links. Thanks to our Patreons. Thanks for watching.